Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. It is good to be back. It is good to be back. All right, uh, we got another one for you. Uh, Pro Box is being moved to Friday. It's should, typically it's Wednesday, but they're doing it on Friday. Uh, so we're going to get into the main event of the Pro Box card, which is a really intriguing fight. It's a really, really interesting fight. Uh, Ramon Cardenas and Israel Picazzo. Um, it's uh, some confusion on what this guy's name is, uh, but we're going to go with Israel Picazzo. Uh, found some tape on him. He's a, he's an interesting fighter. This is going to be a good one. Before we get into this, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Book in all forms of social media. Please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, just five dollars a month gets you a ton of perks. Um, gets you uh, lock of the week. Gets you a free T-shirt. Uh, it gets you a ton of good stuff. Uh, you can ask the the Boxing Book to handicap any fight, and I'll do it for you. It gets you a ton a ton of perks. Um, just five dollars a month. Uh, join, and I'll, I'll handicap any fight for you. Um, I'll get, you get the lock of the week, which will come out tomorrow for the Patreons. Um, all right. Also, subscribe to my other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Uh, the main. Uh, all right. So let's get into let's get into the Ramon Cardenas and Israel Picasso fight, which is the main event. On the showbox card on on Friday, this is a really really good fight. I'm I'm really really into this fight. 122 pounders. Uh, Ramon Cardenas is coming off a spe spectacular win over Rafael Pedraza, which was on Showbox. I think it may have been the the, the last Showbox card, uh, but he's also got a win over Michelle Banquez that was um, also in San Antonio. Uh, that was on the undercard of Mixayo and Vargas uh, Figueroa. Uh, Castro or on that card uh, that was in July of 2022 July of 2022 Cortez is a really talented fighter I, I think it's often it's just a question of motivation uh, but he's got good power good speed really talented fighter Good counter puncher. He picks his counters real well. There's a lot of athleticism too. Like he's a really good athlete, which you don't really expect. He's got two fisted power, and he's patient and calm. Like he's really, really patient and calm in exchanges. You can't get him flushed. You can't get him upset. He stays calm and he sticks to his game plan. He's excellent. He, he's a real talent at 118 and 122. He can still go to 118, uh, but he's, he's a super talent at, at those two weight classes. He rolls with shots really well. Like I said, he, he can make you miss, make you miss. There's, He's not just a pressure fighter. He's not your typical Mexican pressure fighter. He's from San Antonio. Um, but you know, he's, he's a solid athlete with, with good movement, good skills, good speed. Two-fisted power. Really good counter puncher. He looks to counter, but he can lead. He's got he's good on the inside, which is gonna be vital in this fight. And he's got really good timing. His timing and his counter shots are, are, are top-notch, world class. And then he's he's got all the skills. Like this is a guy. Let's see how he does. He took he took a, a big step up in, in Pedraza. That was um uh, you know, he came in a pretty heavy underdog in that fight. He scored a second round knockout. Before that, uh, he went in as an underdog against Michel Banquez and uh, out, outboxed Banquez. So he, this guy is used to coming in as an underdog and he's used to beating guys who are there to beat him. He trained with Barry Hunter in Knucklehead's gym out in uh, in D.C. So you can see that's a part of his game. He's back training in San Antonio now. This is a gifted fighter. He's got all the skills you'd want. What can he do with it? We're going to find out. Okay. And the obvious question is, who is Israel Picasso? Who is this guy? If he, The hardest of hardcores in the U.S. And, and, and U.K. and Australia, wherever you're listening, probably not going to know who this guy is. I, I had to search pretty hard to find tape on him. I found tape on him on about three fights. He fights tall. He's listed only 5'6". So this is telling me he's only got about a half inch height advantage over Cardenas. But he looks a lot taller and longer than that. Uh, he fights tall. 
He wants to be on the outside. His power's on the end of his uh, shots. He wants to keep you on the outside. He's defensively flawed, so you can get on the inside. Remember, we said Cardenas is good at getting on the inside and skilled on the inside. He's a really good counter puncher, and Picasso is hyper aggressive, uh, especially against the lower competition. He's reeled in a little bit as he's gotten older. Uh, but Picasso is a guy that looks like he throws everything hard, and it looks like he has power even though his knockout percentage isn't great. It's not bad, 20 knockouts and 30 wins. He's got five losses. Uh, but if you go over some of those losses, they, they came early in his career. He got a loss in 2016. That's over seven years ago. He lost to Mauricio Laura. Not a big deal. He's got a, another loss to, to a guy named Joel Cordova. And he had a loss to Eduardo Baez in 2019. The losses are a long time ago. He hasn't lost since then. He's won 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 fights in a row. So at one point he was 15 and 5. Now he's 30 and 5. He's got some knockouts. Is is he's taken some step up over prospects who weren't exactly lighting the world on fire. Giovanni Davado Marquez. Uh he fought oh, Jesus Rivas, who was 15 0 at the time, and then in his last fight. Well, two fights ago, actually. His last fight was against Wilmer Soto. That was in December. His last big fight was a Kulikan against Hector Escobar. You can find that online. Uh, that was a really good fight, competitive fight for a, a WBA strap, an Intercontinental strap, which he scored a 10-round decision. He fought his last fight in Florida, uh, in, uh, in Orlando. So I guess they're going to use him here. He throws hard. He's got good power. I, I think he's grown into his man strength. He's sloppy on his feet. He's wild. Um, but there's something to him. He's he's not bad. I, I think this is a bad matchup for him. He leaves himself wide open on the inside. You know, he, he wants to be on the outside. He wants to land his big shots from the outside. He wants to use his reach, and he, and he wants to use his power. And he throws in good volume. Like, he can keep you off him if you can't time him. If you show up, he's going to have a field day with you. You got to throw, you got to slip, you got to get inside on him. You don't want to eat his shots because it does seem like he hits really hard. But he's also easy to hit. He telegraphs your shots. His footwork, he crosses his feet coming in. There's a lot of flaws in this guy, but what he does, he does well, and what he does makes him really dangerous. I'm gonna, Let's get into it. Let's take a look at the odds. Because I was a little surprised that they made Cardenas a underdog Yet again, he's not a massive underdog. Let's get rid of Eduardo Nunes. That was the last show. He's just plus 125. So he's not far off from being even. I like Cardenas to win, and I like him to win on points. If you can find a prop uh, for him to win by points or take the over, I would take it. $100 makes you a $125 bet. It's pretty good. I, I like Cardenas to win this fight. I think stylistically, he – this. Fight is it fights to his favor. You have a, a good counter puncher with good speed who's good on the inside against a guy who's all wrong on that, you know, or a guy who wants to do all his work on the outside, who can't really keep you at the outside if you're good. I, I see Cardenas getting on the inside and, and winning the fight on the inside, but Picasso is dangerous. Picasso is going to be dangerous from the outside. Um, so it, it's just going to be. It's going to be a battle of real estate. Ken Cardenas is getting the inside. I'm betting that he can, and he wins the fight in there. But this is a really, really good fight. This is a really good main event. That's all there is. So you got Cardenas, plus 125, a one-times bet. Make sure on $100, about $125. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie, all forms of social media. Um... The boxing book you for every major fight showing you how to consistently bring down the house, how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. We went 4 0 last week. We're going to try to repeat it again this week. Uh, and we're just making money consistently for you guys every single week. We really don't miss. I don't really have off weeks. I'm more of Clay Thompson than I am, you know, uh, Steph, Seth Curry. I, I, Seth Curry. I don't have days where I. Streaks where I go ice cold. I, I, I'm pretty consistent. Uh, I don't miss too often. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, again, I don't gamble, but if you do, I use DraftKings. 
Uh, I think DraftKings is an excellent book. Gives you pretty good odds. It's user-friendly. Uh, I live in Texas. I can't even use DraftKings. Uh, but if you do gamble, I'm showing you how to bring down the house. There's always a bull market somewhere. I'm going to show you how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. Follow me at 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, subscribe to the Patreon. The link is in the description. Guys, please like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, uh, and subscribe to the Patreon. Five dollars a month gets you the block of the week. It gets you all the perks, the free T-shirt. It gets you the um, you can you can ask me to handicap a fight. A ton of perks in that. Let me know what you guys think. Um, leave your comments below. It is and also uh, follow me at Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Well, that's completely dedicated to Texas boxing. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. I'm gonna be away for a few days. I'm going. Uh, as me, these are covering the Oshaki Forster fight at Madison Square Garden. Um, so I will be there. I'm going to try to put out another video or two. I'm going to try to get to Jojo Diaz. I'm intrigued by that fight, so I'm going to try to get to that. Uh, no promises, though. But it is February 14th, 2024. Wish your lady a happy Valentine's Day. If you are one of the 2% of my audience who is a woman, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, if not, make sure to wish your lady a happy Valentine's Day. February 4th, uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God.